Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in Dunedin, Florida, near Clearwater and Tampa Bay, to feature an episode on epiphytes. What are epiphytes? Epi means upon, phyte means plant from the Greek. So epiphytes are plants that grow on other plants, and I'm standing underneath this big old live oak that is covered with these fascinating epiphytes. So today's episode is all about epiphytes, which many of you may know as air plants. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Epiphytes fascinate me. Last night we had a very heavy rain and I came out here to Hammock Park in Dunedin to look at some epiphytes. I opened the door of my car and looked down and lying on the ground is this epiphytic plant that had fallen off a tree probably by that heavy rain. And this is a great example of an epiphyte. It's known as a small ball fern. It's in the family called Tillandsia, and it is a perfect example of what an epiphyte is. Again, many of you at home probably know this as an air plant and may have some of these hanging around in your house. And they're called air plants because they don't seem to have any connection to the land or soil and so essentially live in the air. And that's not far from the truth. They do need to live on something and when they live on another plant it's called an epiphyte. These however can show up on telephone poles, on electric lines, on cable lines up in the air. They will seem to grow wherever they can attach. Now one of the things you'll notice right away about these is that they have no roots. They do have some anchors which serve to essentially glue themselves down to another plant or structure. And they'll grow seemingly in the air. One of the things that you can see when you look at an epiphyte up close is they have these very, very fine silvery hairs on them. These silvery hairs are called trichomes. And trichomes are made up of both living and dead cells. The trichomes have cells that are designed to absorb water when it rains because they can't get it from the soil. They can only get it when it rains or high humidity or even from fog. And the dead cells on here will fill up with water and act like little microscopic sponges while these other hairs will absorb the water into the essentially the leaf-like structure. So plants that you have at home, their leaves don't absorb water. Their leaves are for doing photosynthesis and exposing themselves to the sun. It's the roots that take in the water and nutrients. The trichomes on these plants will also serve to capture debris and dust particles in the air because these plants need to get nitrogen and phosphorus. These are essentially the things that you would have in fertilizer that help your plants at home grow. So where do these air plants get their fertilizers from? They have to get it from dust particles in the air. Sometimes it's actually bacteria that are on the dust particles that land on the plant that are captured by some of these trichomes and that's where they can absorb some nitrogen and phosphorus. Other epiphytes that are hanging on a tree can also get nutrients by the runoff from the tree itself. As rain falls on the tree it'll pick up particles, debris, poop from mammals, poop from birds, and create a solution or nutrient tea. And from this nutrient tea, the plants can get all the nutrition they need, all the nitrogen and phosphorus and other essential minerals in order to grow. There's a number of different kinds of epiphytes here in Florida on these plants. They'll include ferns, lichens, bromeliads, and of course this genus called Tillandsia, which includes these species here. Some of these Tillandsias can be very large and very significant. 
On this particular oak tree, there's a lot of fern called a resurrection fern, and it too is an epiphyte. One of the most obvious epiphytes here in Florida is Spanish moss. And Spanish moss is actually neither Spanish nor is it a moss, but it's another species in the genus Celancia, and is probably one of the most obvious because of their rigorous, rigorous growth. Check out my episode on Spanish moss, and you can learn everything there is to know about that. I want to make a point again that these epiphytes are not parasites. There are plants that are parasitic on other plants like dotter and mistletoe. Both of these plants have special root-like structures called hostoria that penetrate into the host plant and derive nutrients by stealing it from the tree, stealing their nutrient-rich sap and growing off that. So these parasitic plants can harm the plant or tree that it's on. Air plants, however, are non-parasitic. They're only attached to the tree to have a place to live, a place to get sunlight. If they occur in large, large numbers on a tree, they can perhaps shade out some of its leaves and compete with the tree for sunlight. One will often find that rather than killing parts of the tree, the air plants are living on the dead limbs that were dead already and have very few leaves, so there's more light available for these epiphytes to attach and thrive with some sunlight. Whereas on healthy branches, they don't do as so well because they're shaded from the sun. It's often said that beauty is an eye of the beholder. I think these epiphytes on the plants just gives the forest such a tropical, wild, erythral feel. I love seeing these epiphytes. But local people at home might not like to have these epiphytes on their trees at home. And they'll actually make efforts to have them removed. And if you look online, there's all kinds of recommendations on how to remove epiphytes for your tree. And I'm just so categorically against that because to me, these epiphytes add biodiversity. They add habitat, they add interest. And biodiversity, bottom line, is a good thing. So one of the most common of these epiphytes on these live oaks here in Florida is this small ball moss. It's in the genus again, Tillandia, like so many of these epiphytes. And they call it ball moss because as it reproduces, this center will get thicker and thicker and almost ball-like. And they're actually including many offspring, which they call pups. I think that's so cute that they call the offspring of these plants pups. And these pups will gather into a significant ball. You can see that um, these plants are true flowering plants. They will produce a bract here. They will flower and produce seeds. These seeds are windblown. These windblown seeds are very lightweight. They'll have fine, fine fibers on them like thistle or milkweed or dandelion seeds that are blown in the wind. Eventually they'll land on a crevice in the bark or land on a branch of a tree and they'll begin to grow. So true. So again, I want to emphasize that these guys are truly flowering plants. I hope you can see how absolutely fascinated I am by these epiphytes, by this genus Tillandsia and all the other bromeliads and orchids and ferns that grow on these trees. I think they're just absolutely spectacular. And it's so cool for me to come from the Appalachian Mountains where we don't see all these epiphytes like you do here in Florida and see this great diversity and thickness of these epiphytes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door. And if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I really love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.